right, let's round this chapter out with some multiple choice questions. So example 12, for which of the following distributions is the mean greater than the median? So this, this phrase right here, distribution, you're gonna see it pop up a bunch uh, in stats. So I, I just wanna be clear that for the most part, we will either see a table or we will see a graph. Okay, those are the most common distributions we're going to see. And in this particular problem, they gave us four graphs. So you've got this phrase here, when is the mean greater than the median? So mean greater than the median. If we just scoot back to a couple of pages ago, we have here that in a skewed right graph, the mean is to the right of the median, where in a skewed left graph, the mean is to the left of the median. So let's think about what example 12 is asking us, right? We want the mean to be greater than the median. So if the mean is greater than the median, let's think about an x-axis, right? And here is the mean, and it needs to be greater than the median. So the median needs to be over here, right? So this is a, an x-axis where the mean is greater than the median, right? The mean is a larger number, because maybe this would be one, two, three, four, right? Mean greater than median. Okay, so I want the mean to be to the right of the median. And keep in mind, in a symmetric graph, the mean and median are the same, and the mean has now been pulled to the right of the median. The mean is pulled to the right in a graph that skews right. So if I take a look at these four graphs, the one that skews right is option C, okay? So your mean, is greater than your median in a skewed right graph. And your mean is less than your median in a skewed left graph. And your mean is equal to your median in a symmetric graph. So in this problem, the mean would be similar to the median because that's roughly symmetric. Here we've got something that's skewed left, so the mean would have been smaller than the median. This is something that's like kind of ugly. Uh, it's almost uniform. It's almost to the point where most of the rectangles or a good chunk of the rectangles have the same height, but really there's a lot of variability in here. So the mean here, the mean and the median probably be pretty close to one another because there is a little bit of symmetry here. Maybe the mean would be a little bit less, um, but, but it doesn't matter because we're being asked when is the mean greater than the median and this is the only skewed right curve. All right, let's look at example 13 now. So as we start to look at example 13, let's read it, see if we can identify the variable in the problem. The following hypothetical data set shows the purchase prices in thousands for a sample of three bedroom, two bedroom homes, oops, excuse me, two bathroom homes in Essex County, Massachusetts over the past year. How many outliers are present in this distribution? Ah, so I just made myself into a liar. So this distribution, this time, they didn't give us a table or a graph. They gave us raw data, so we could make a graph. We just haven't seen that yet. But this is how the data was distributed, passed out. All right, so let's see, what do these numbers represent? What is the variable in this problem? So 250, what, 250, um, I don't know, apples I ate today, 250 pets. Um, if we look at it, it says it's the purchase price. So my variable is house purchase price. And they say that's in thousands, and it would be in thousands of dollars. All right, so this means 250,000, 254,000, so on and so forth. Now, if I look at this, let's just get some gut feelings for this. If I'm floating around, uh, to me, the average house price looks like it would be somewhere around, uh, I don't know, 260, 270. So I'm just gonna get some gut feelings here. I think that the mean, the average, is somewhere around 270,000, give or take. All right, and if I look through this, does there look to be any outliers? Um, I see 426, that seems a bit on the high side. Um, and maybe 129's a bit on the low side. So. I think there are outliers present. 
just gut feeling wise, but I need to actually go calculate it. And if you remember from before, if you wanna calculate outliers, you gotta come up with the safety zone. So we need to find the IQR. Oops. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll do that first, sorry. So we'll go Q3 minus Q1, okay? And then whatever number we get in step one, we're gonna take that number and multiply 1.5 by it. So I don't know what that number is yet, all right? But I'm gonna multiply that number by 1.5. And those are always our first two steps. So let me head over to my calculator, do a little data entry, and we're gonna go one bar stats. All right, so let's see what we got in here. I do have some data, so let me clear all of that out and start putting this in. Did I skip one? I think I did. 298, this should be 231, there we go. Let me make sure. So it says I have 24 as my first blank entry. So they're saying I should have 23 data points. I didn't actually count it. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that's looking good. Um, since I made that typo earlier, I'm just going to scroll through this and make sure I don't have any typos in my actual data right now. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I should be good to go. So let's go figure out what the IQR is. I'll go back to my home screen, do a little one of our stats, and we are looking, um, well, just offhand, it looks like the average purchase price was 261, I guess 270, so I wasn't too far off. But these are the numbers I want. So I really want Q3 and Q1, so I got 298 minus 234. 298 minus 234, and that's what I'm gonna need. So let's do 298, subtract out 234, and we are looking at 64. All right, I'm gonna multiply that number by 1.5, and that is gonna give me 96. All right, so here's the fun. Here's where we gotta build the safety zone. So I'm gonna lower the Q1 threshold through subtraction, but I'm gonna raise the Q3 threshold with addition. All right, so Q1 in this case was 234, so I'm looking at 234 minus 96. Q3 was 298, so I'm looking at 298 plus 96. Let's see what we got. Looks like my lower threshold is 138, and my upper threshold is 394. All right, so this is my safety zone. So let me go ahead, let me run one of our stats again. I don't remember what my max and min were. And I wanna figure that out. All right, 129. So 129 was my lowest. All right, is 129 an outlier? It is 129, observation 129, is going to be an outlier because it doesn't fall in my safety zone. So there's 129. All right, now I don't know the next lowest observation. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna order my calculator. I'm gonna put them in ascending order. So I'll do, hey calculator, can you please sort L1? And it'll do it for me. So let me see what we have here. 129 and then it looks like the next observation was 210. 210 is in the safety zone, so 129 is my only lowest um, low outlier. Um, let's see how we're doing. Um, 394 is the next one. Do I have anything above 394? Oh, I do, I have two of them here, right? I've got 426, that was one I saw, and then I guess 401, I missed that one I was looking through. Oh, it's right there, 401. All right, so I actually have three outliers in this data set. If you wanted to kind of work around this safety zone because it is a multiple choice question, you could make a box plot. You see right now I have plot 
1, 2, and 3 off. But plot 1, it's set up, it's modified. I've got L1 against 1, which is great because each of these data points should be represented once. If I turn that on and hit zoom 9, I should actually see three outliers. And it's a little tricky to see. It might not show on the calculator because I have them as just little dots. Let me change this back over to that rectangle, small, the hollow square, I should say. And I think that kind of shows it better on camera. So you can see if I hit trace, there's my outlier at 129. My lowest non-outlier was 210. All right, there's Q1 at 234. There's the median of 236. And they barely look like there's any difference because of the scale of my graph. All right, and then we head up to the highest non-outlier of 342, and then 401 and 426 are outliers. All right, but let, let's answer this question. This question actually said, how many are present? Well, I have three outliers present, so my answer is D. Okay. All right, last but not least, at least multiple choice wise, let's go see if we can calculate a z-score. So it says the mean of a data set is 273.02, and its standard deviation is 108.22. Find the z-score for a value of 436.70. So no context to this data, which is fine. We're talking about z-scores. There is a formula for z-scores. It is value minus mean over standard deviation. And again, z-scores are going to come back up in chapter 6 when we go back into, or really not back into, but when we really take a look at normal distributions, specifically the standard normal distribution for z-scores. All right, but all we have to do is figure out where these three numbers are. So it says right here the mean was 273. I'll put that in for a mean. It says the standard deviation was 108.22. I'll put that in in the denominator. And we've got it right here, the value of 436.7. So we will go 436.70. I will subtract out the mean of 273.02. And I will divide by 108.22. And back when we were looking at this, I mentioned you need to be careful with your calculator. So sometimes I get students that, that try and lump it all into one calculator expression, and they don't use proper parentheses, and they get the wrong answer. So let me show you the wrong way to do it. And I will show you the right way, but let me show you the wrong way first. So I get this sometimes, where students will just type this, this expression in, and they haven't put parentheses around the numerator, and they get this answer, and they say, well, it's 434. That's not any of the options here, so, so what went wrong? Well, PEMDAS is what went wrong. Your calculator is going to do this division first, and then the subtraction. So what's happening is it's going to perform 273.02 divided by 108.22 first, and then subtract that number from 436. And what you want it to do is you want it to do the numerator first. You want to find out what was this deviation and then put it in ratio to the standard deviation. But your calculator is only dividing 108.22 into 273. It's not doing it into the 436 number. So you have a couple of options. You can all... This is one. You can put parentheses around that numerator. And that will tell your calculator to do the parentheses first, right? PEMDAS, we're doing parentheses first. And you will get the correct answer, right? 1.845 is what I'm looking at. Did I do something incorrect? Oh, I see it because I didn't see 1.845 here. I, I transposed this. Do we see I have the 273, I'm um, sorry, 237.02? So what I want to do, I'm going to re-enter that, but I'm going to change this to 273. So that should work out. Okay, so let me clear this and we'll do all of this again. So I put the parentheses around the numerator, hit enter, and there's my answer of 1.51. And now I can see that in option B. The other thing that you can do is you can just do the numerator first, right? So I could on my calculator just do 436.7, subtract out 273.02, and then I can divide that by 108.22. So you always have the option of just taking your calculator commands one piece at a time. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go back through all of our previous examples and fill out the socks for all of them. Because now we can do shape, outlier, center, spread. 
So I'm going to go back through all of the examples throughout this chapter and show you what their socks were.